الحمد لله الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده وبعد الحمد لله we are now at ayah ayat 7 onward uh, we penetrated some of these ayat previously and we had reached from 1 to 6 and we'd also gone onward but today inshallah we're moving from ayah 7 onward and putting the pieces together because now we're starting to go into affairs that are connected with inheritance and also the other slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, Imam Ibn Jawzi, rahimahullah, <clears throat> he says, quote, Now this statement that we have from the Exalted One is connected to the inheritance. And it is where Allah, exalted be He, has said, لِلْرِجَالِ نَصِيبٌ مِمَّا تَرَكَ الْوَالِدَانِ وَالْأَقْرَبُونَ وَلِلنِّسَاءِ نَصِيبٌ مِمَّا تَرَكَ الْوَالِدَانِ وَالْأَقْرَبُونَ مِمَّا قَلَّ مِنْهُ أَوْ كَثُرُ نَصِيبًا مَفْرُوضًا وَإِذَا حَضَرَ الْقِسْمَةِ قسمة أول القربى واليتامى والمساكين فارزقوهم منه وقولوا لهم قولا معروفا وليخشى, الذ... وليخشى الذين لو تركوا من خلفهم ذرية ضعافا خافوا عليهم فَلْيَتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَلْيَقُولُوا قَوْلًا سَدِيدًا إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَأْكُلُونَ أَمْوَالَ الْيَتَامَى ظُلْمًا إِنَّمَا يَأْكُلُونَ فِي بُطُونِهِمْ نَارًا وَسَيَصْلَوْنَ سَعِيرًا يوصيكم الله في أولادكم للذكر مثل حظ ثيين فإن كن نساء فوق اثنتين فلهن ثلثا ما ترك وَإِن كَانَتْ وَاحِدَةً فَلَهَا النِّصْفِ وَلِأَبَوَيْهِ لِكُلِّ وَاحِدٍ مِّنْهُمَ السُّدُسُ مِمَّا تَرَكَ إِنْ كَانَ لَهُ وَلَدٌ فَإِنْ لَمْ يَكُنْ لَهُ وَلَدٌ وَوَرِثَهُ أَبَوَاهُ فَلِأُمِّهِ الثُّلُثُ فَإِنْ كَانَ لَهُ إِخْوَةٌ فَلِأُمِّهِ السُّدُسُ من بعد وصية يوصي بها أو دين آباؤكم أو أبناؤكم لا تدرون أيهم أقرب لكم نفعا فريضة من الله إن الله كان عليما حكيما <clears throat> and men possess a share in that which their parents and near relatives have left and the women possess a share of what their parents and near relatives have left whether this was by a bequest that is small or large it is a, it is a portion that has been appointed by Allah and when there are present at the division of the inheritance other relatives, orphans and the needy provide for them as well and speak to them a word of kindness and goodness. And let those who are the guardians of the orphans fear and think that if they were to leave, if they were to leave behind them small, weak offspring, how deeply concerned they would have felt on their account. Therefore they should fear Allah and speak only that which is upright and just. Indeed, those who take the wealth and property of the orphans wrongfully. They, fall, they swallow nothing into their bellies but fire. 
and they will be cast in the blazing fire soon enough. Allah has commanded you about your children in their inheritance. The share of the male is equal to the share of two females. Then if there are daughters only, more than two, then they shall have that which is two-thirds of that which is left by the deceased. And if there is only one daughter, for her is one half, and for each of the parents of the deceased is one-sixth of what was left, provided the deceased has a child. But in case he has no child and leaves behind only his parents, then for his mother the share is one-third, the rest goes to the father. But if the deceased has brothers and sisters as well, then for the mother is one-sixth as a share. And this division takes effect after the payment of any bequest made by the deceased as well as debts. Your fathers and your sons, you do not know which of them is nearer to you in benefit. These shares are appointed in their proportion from Allah. Indeed, Allah is all-knowing and all-wise. Surah Ali Imran, Surah Al-Nisa, the fourth surah, ayat 7 through 11. And the Exalted One has also said, وَلَكُمْ, ولكم نِصْفُ مَا تَرَكَ أَزْوَاجُكُمْ إِنْ لَمْ يَكُنْ لَهُنَّ وَلَدٍ فَإِنْ كَانَ لَهُنَّ وَلَدٌ فَلَكُمُ الرُّبْعُ مِمَّا تَرَكْنْ مِنْ بَعْدِ وَصِيَّةٍ يُوصِينَ بِهَا أَوْ دَيْنٍ وَلَهُنَّ رُبْعُ مِمَّا تَرَكَتُمْ إِنْ لَمْ يَكُنْ لَكُمْ وَلَدٍ فَإِنْ كَانَ لَكُمْ وَلَدٌ فَلَهُنَّ الثُّمُنُ مِمَّا تَرَكَتُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ وَصِيَّةٍ تُوصُونَ بِهَا أَوْ دَيْنٍ وَإِنْ كَانَ رَجُلٌ يُورَثُ كَلَالَةً أَوْ امْرَأَةٌ وَلَهُ أَخٌ أَوْ أُخْتٌ فَلِكُلِّ وَاحِدٍ مِنْ مِنْهُمَا السُّدُسُ فَإِنْ كَانُوا أَكْثَرَ مِنْ ذَلِكَ فَهُمْ شُرَكَاءُ فِي الثُّلُثِ مِنْ بَعْدِ وَصِيَّةٍ يُوصَى بِهَا أَوْ دَيْنٍ غَيْرَ مُضَارٍّ وَصِيَّةٍ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَاللَّهُ عَلِيمٌ حَلِيمٌ تِلْكَ حُدُودُ اللَّهِ وَمَنْ يُطَعِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ يُدْخِلْهُ جَنَّاتٍ تَجَرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارُ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا وَذَلِكَ الْفَوْزُ الْعَظِيمُ وَمَنْ يَعْصِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ وَيَتَعَدَّ حُدُودَهُ يُدْخِلْهُ نَارًا خَالِدًا فِيهَا وَلَهُ عَذَابٌ مُهِينٌ and you possess one half of what your wives may leave behind, provided they have no children. But if they have a child, then you have one-fourth of what they leave. And this division is effective after fulfilling the bequest they make and after payment of the debts. And for your wives is one-fourth of what you leave if you have no child. And if you have a child, then for them is one-eighth of what you leave behind. This division will be effective after fulfilling the bequest that you may have made and after paying debts. And if a person, whether male or female, whose legacy is to be divided is without children as well as parents as direct heirs, but has a brother or sister, then each one of these two will get one-sixth. And if the brother and sisters be more than one, then they, then they are all sharers in one-third. They shall share all of them in one-third. This division will be made after fulfilling any bequest made by the deceased and after payment of the debts, provided the deceased would not have caused any harm to the interests of the heirs. This system that has been laid down for the inheritance is an is a instruction from Allah, and Allah is the all-knowing, the most forbearing. These are the boundaries set by Allah, and whoever obeys Allah, and whosoever obeys Allah and his messenger, Allah will cause that one to enter the paradise, watered by running streams beneath, therein they shall abide forever. And this is the great triumph indeed. And whoever disobeys Allah and his messenger and transgresses the bounds set by Allah, him shall Allah cause to enter the fire. Therein, this one shall be there forever. And this is a great punishment indeed.
Surah An-Nisa, the fourth surah, ayah 14. Uh, ayat 12 through 14. And the exalted one is further said, وَاللَّاتِ يَأْتِينَ الْفَاحِشَةَ مِن نِسَائِكُمْ فَاسْتَشْهِدُوا عَلَيْهِنَّ أَرْبَعَةً مِّنْكُمْ فَإِنْ شَهِدُوا فَإِنْ شَهِدُوا فَأَمْسِكُوهُنَّ فِي الْبُيُوتِ حَتَّى يَتَوَفَّاهُنَّ الْمَوْتِ حتى يتوفاهن الموت أو يجعل الله لهن سبيلا واللذان يأتيانها منكم فآذوهما فإن تابا وأصلحا فأعرضوا عنهما إن الله كان توابا رحيما إِنَّمَا التَّوْبَةُ عَلَى اللَّهِ لِلَّذِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ السُّوءَ بِجِهَالَةٍ ثُمَّ يَتُوبُونَ مِنْ قَرِيبٍ فَأُولَئِكَ يَتُوبُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ عَلِيمًا حَكِيمًا وَلَيْسَتِ التَّوْبَةُ لِلَّذِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ السَّيِّئَاتِ حَتَّى إِذَا حَضَرَ أَحَدُهُمُ الْمَوْتُ قَالَ إِنِّي تُبَتُ الْآنِ حَتَّى إِذَا حَضَرَ أَحَدُهُمُ الْمَوْتُ قَالَ إِنِّي تُبْتُ الْآنَ وَلَا الَّذِينَ يَمُوتُونَ وَهُمْ كُفَّارٌ أولئك أعتدنا لهم عذابا أليما يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا يحل لكم أن ترثوا النساء كرها ولا تعضلوهن لتذهبوا ببعض ما آتيتموهن إلا أن يأتين بفاحشة مبينة وعاشروهن بالمعروف فإن كرهتموهن فعسى أن تكرهوا شيئا ويجعل الله فيه خيرا كثيرا And whichever of your women commit adultery, call for four male witnesses from the accuser against them from among you. Then if they give evidence to the effect, then shut those women in their houses until death overtakes them, or Allah appoints some way of release for them. And as for the two, male and female, who commit adultery from among you, give them severe, severe punishment. Then if they both repent and amend themselves, leave them alone. Indeed, Allah is the most forgiving, the most merciful. The repentance, acceptance, and that which Allah has accepted is of those who commit a sin and foolishness, or in ignorance, and thereafter that they repent. These are the people with whom Allah shall forgive, and indeed Allah is the All Knowing, the All Wise. The repentance of the repentance is not accepted for those who persist in evil throughout their life until when death comes to them, one of them says, I repent. Nor is repentance accepted for the one who dies as an unbeliever. These have a painful punishment to come. You who believe it is not allowed for you to become heirs of women by force, nor detain them with the design that you may take away some portion of the bridal gift that you've given them, except in case that they are guilty of open, flagrant indecency, and lead your life with your wives fairly and justly. If you dislike them, be patient, because you may dis dislike something, and yet Allah has placed abundant good in that thing. Surah An-Nisa, the fourth surah, ayat 15. 19. Now when the exalted one has said that the men have a portion of that which the parents and their relatives have left, the reason for the revelation of this ayah is Aus ibn Thabit al-Ansari had died and left behind three daughters and a wife. 
Two men came from the children of his uncle, and their names were Qatada and Urfata. And they took his wealth. And they didn't give his wife, they neither gave his wife nor his daughters anything. So his wife came to the Prophet ﷺ and mentioned this to him. And she complained of the biting poverty that she felt. And this ayah was sent down. This was mentioned by Ibn Abbas. And Qatada also said that they, these people did not used to give the inheritance to the women until this ayah was sent. Now, the intent of the word men here means males. And by women, it means females. Whether they are young or old. So this may not be always referring to adults, but it is referring to males and females who shall inherit. Now, the portion here is referring to something that has been given and left behind. Now, this ayah is particularly mujmal. Which mujmal in this case means an ayah that requires further elucidation. And the elucidation is well known and is given in another place. Just as Allah has said, And give the right on the day that the wealth is to be divided. Surah An'am, the sixth surah, ayah 141. And the statement, take from their wealth sadaq, take from their wealth sadaqa. Surah the Tawbah, the ninth surah, ayah 103. The word mafrood mentioned in this ayah means that which Allah has declared compulsory. And Allah in this ayah, by using the word mafrood, is using the severity of the word to emphasize that it is compulsory. And when the time for dividing up the portions comes, for the near relatives. Now the portions referred to here are referring to two things. Number one, it's referring to the portion of the inheritance after the death of the person who will be inherited from. So in this ayah, Allah is speaking to those who will die and leave behind the wealth. And this is the statement of the vast majority. Particularly Ibn Abbas. Particularly Ibn Abbas and Al Hassan and Ibn Shihab al Zuhri. Secondly, this is referring to the bequest of the deceased before he dies. So he's been commanded to specify the bequest. Regarding the one who won't leave anything. Because the bequest is a gift to the one who will not inherit anything. Whereas the inheritance is something predetermined. It's been narrated from Ibn Abbas and Ibn Zayd. The same thing. The scholars of commentary have also said. The intent of those near relatives means those who will not inherit and so when Allah says, فَرُزُقُوهُمْ Give them something of it, meaning give them a piece of it, give them some of the sustenance of it, and this is praiseworthy according to the majority position. Now some have only gone to the position that it is compulsory, and this is if the inheritors were adults then they're given their portion. And if they are small, then the portion is kept to the side and given to them when they attain the age of maturity. This has been narrated from Ubaidah that he used to divide the wealth of the orphans and he ordered that some would take it back and hold on to it and then give it when it was time. And he said at one point, had it not been for this ayah, I would have loved that I had some of this as part of my wealth. But this is what has been revealed. Likewise is the statement of Muhammad ibn Sirin, who mentioned the same thing regarding those who are 
orphans. Likewise, it was related from Mujahid who said that that which has been mentioned in this ayah in its totality is wajib. Now the statement, a goodly, a goodly portion or a goodly word, there are four words. 